making a fast skull mold with 5110F platinum silicone. In this video, we're going to cover the process of molding a small part with deep undercuts, in this case, a small resin skull. And we're going to be molding this with 5110F. And the F, of course, stands for fast. So this is the fast version of 5110, which 5110 is a soft, stretchy silicone that is ideal for these parts like this. We also have people using this to make special effects skins and props and that sort of thing. But in this case, we're going to use it to make a small, stretchy mold of a part with deep undercuts. Now, first things first, anytime you're working with a platinum silicone like 5110 or 5110F, make sure that everything you're using is sulfur free and free of any contaminants that could mess up a platinum system or inhibit the platinum system. So for this little plastic skull that I'm molding, I'm filling in any of the little undercuts or air bubbles or anything like that with some protolina clay. Now protolina clay is a sulfur free, very soft modeling clay that's, uh, it can be used for sculpting, but it's mainly used for pattern work like this, for cleaning up resin parts and that sort of thing. But just a very soft oil-based clay that does not contain any contaminants that can affect the cure of a platinum silicone. Now what I'm doing here is making our traditional foam core box. This is a great way to make a mold box for a small object like this. Foam core board you can find at most office supply places. And for small molds, this is ideal because it's much easier to cut, obviously, than MDF or uh, plywood or anything like that. So very easy and very quick to make a small mold box with foam core board. And if you followed our channel for a while, you've probably already seen this used uh, to great success for a lot of different size molds. Now, one thing you want to remember for this is I cut this off a bigger piece. So one edge of this is going to be nice and straight. And that obviously is the edge that I'm going to put facing down. So the resulting mold box, I want to be kind of an oval shape. And the reason for that is I don't want to build a box shape, a rectangle shape, because that would waste a lot of silicone uh, filling out those corners that don't need to be there. So we want to keep this fairly tight around the pattern. So one thing that will make demolding easier, and that way we're not fighting against a big block of silicone, but then also just for economics sake, we just want to make sure that we don't waste silicone to make a mold larger than it it needs to be. So once I've figured out roughly the size of that oval shape I need, I can cut off any excess and then I secure all this together with hot glue. Now, hot glue of late has been very interesting. I found there are some types of hot glue um, that uh, I got a big case of it from Uline and some of the cheaper hot glue can sometimes inhibit some platinum silicones. So when in doubt, do a small test. Now it won't inhibit it all the way through, but where your platinum silicone comes in contact with some of those hot glues, it'll wind up sticky. So be aware of that and typically that problem is solved as soon as you remove the silicone from the uh, the hot glue, but just be aware of that. Most of the hot glue that I've used from hobby stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, I haven't had any issue with, but just be aware there are some types of hot glue out there that will inhibit platinum silicone. Now, once I have everything secured to the baseboard, I just want to make sure I go around and seal up any areas that could be potential leaks with hot glue. And if need be, you can always go back over that hot glue seam with some additional protolina clay. But we just want to make sure that we have plenty of hot glue sealing that up so we don't have any leaks and don't have expensive silicone leaking out of our mold box. Now, we're going to release this with Zip 301 non-silicone mold release. Now what that means is Zip 301 does not contain silicone oil. So that means it's, it is ideal for releasing patterns for mold making when you are using a platinum or tin cure silicone. So when you see that non-silicone mold release, that doesn't mean it's not for silicone molds. That just means that this release agent does not contain any silicone oil. Now once we've sprayed the inside of our mold box and our pattern, we're going to set that down and let that dry because you want to make sure you give that release agent plenty of time to outgas before you pour your silicone. And now we're going to check on the Biddy Mold Supply hymnal to decide which silicone is going to work best for this. 
And of course, we've already decided 5110 platinum silicone. And on page 14, you can read all the specs on that. That will have the mix viscosity and everything. Now, this was printed before the 5110F came out. So it's the same properties as 5110, except faster. And then, of course, for calculating volume, which we're not going to do for the sake of time in this video because we've done it so much in other videos, you can always consult page 45 of your Biddy Mold Supply Hymnal to read up on various volume formulations. And for the newcomers, here's some quick information about the Shore A scale. So all of our soft and firm mold making materials are measured on what's called the Shore A scale. This is an industry scale that uh, measures everything from a low, very soft Shore A 10 all the way up to a very firm Shore A 90. So in this case, we're using something on the low end of the scale. So that lower the number, the softer the material. So even though 5110 is called a uh, 5110, 110 around a 10A, it's actually a little bit softer than that. It actually measures a little bit under a Shore A10, but very soft, very stretchy. But it's important to have a, a mental idea of that Shore A scale anytime you set out on a new mold making project. Now, the 5110F, again, that F stands for fast, so that tells us that is the fast version of the 5110 platinum silicone. Now, just to go over the properties really quick on this formula, 5110F is a fast platinum silicone. This is around a, between a 5 and an 8 or so Shore A value. This has a 6 to 7 minute working time and around a 1 hour demold at 75 degrees. If it's hotter, it's going to be faster. If it's colder, it's going to be slower. But real important, don't ever try to use this under about 65 degrees or you'll have trouble with cure inhibition from that really cold temperature. Now, like all of the 51 series silicones, this is a low viscosity. This is 2,500 centipoise mixed viscosity, one-to-one -one mix ratio. And of course, you can actually thicken this with the Thixo additive for brush-on molds and uh, other brush-up applications. Now, again, this mixes one-to-one. So very simple mix ratio for this, but remember products that are one to one mix ratio, that's not sum to sum. You still want to be as accurate as possible. And I know I sound like a broken record when I bear down on this, but remember that when you're working in really small amounts, you need to be that much more accurate. Because if you're doing a batch of say uh, 20 grams and your gram scale has a margin of error of uh, say one or two grams, you could be off by up to 20% if you're not careful. So remember that when you're working in really small batch sizes, that's where you have to really pay attention to that. And sometimes you have to mix a little bit larger batch to make sure everything is dressed right dress and is accurate as possible. So here you'll see we're going to take about uh, 45 seconds to a minute to mix everything up really good. It doesn't take long because again very low mix viscosity and you can always add a little bit of silicone pigment to this too to help you track your progress of mixing. Now because this is a low viscosity silicone there's a lot of applications where you could get away with pouring this like you saw in our hand video recently without vacuum degassing but it's always a good idea in mold making especially if you're going to be pressure casting to vacuum degas your silicone before you pour a mold. And because this particular silicone has a, a fairly long working time, considering how fast the demold time is, there is more than enough time to get everything properly mixed and poured and uh, vacuum degassed if necessary. Now remember, it's always a good idea before you start cracking open your mold box to check what's left over in your mixing cup to make sure everything is properly cured. And that way you don't go messing up an otherwise perfect mold by trying to demold it too early. So when we can peel everything out successfully out of our mixing cup, then we're ready to demold our part. So everything is set up, so we're ready to demold this. And again, that demold time is going to be typically around an hour at 75 degrees. But here in the fine state of Texas, if you're working in a warm work environment, it will be much faster. In Texas, sometimes we'll even put uh, mold boxes outside in the sun to uh, cure them that much faster because heat is free accelerator for platinum silicones. Now, once we peeled off the remainder of our foam core off our silicone mold, we are ready to carefully demold our part. And remember, this is a very soft, stretchy silicone. Even though it's soft, it is very strong. So it does have good elongation. 
And you notice we have a nice pretty mold there ready to trim up the top and start casting. And the whole idea here is by using a soft silicone mold for this kind of part is obviously that minimizes seams on our finished cast piece. And this will also work very well for uh, resin casting, uh, cold cast resin pieces with uh, metal powders. And we'll do that in a future video. But here, just to test out the new mold, I thought we'd dump some art cast white into the mold. And one little trick I wanted to show you here, and obviously only do this if you're wearing gloves, because this has is a, a mold with a, a few little intricate places like the teeth and around the jaw area of that skull might want to trap air bubbles. I just take my thumb, obviously covered with a nitrile glove, and work that resin into those areas where I might trap air bubbles and then go ahead and top off the rest of the mold. And Artcast White has about a three minute working time and about a 15 to 20 minute demold at room temperature. So here is our finished cast. And a mold like this is ideal for casting delicate wax parts, resin parts, cold cast bronze parts, but any number of polyurethane casting materials such as the casting rubbers like the FP series or TC800, any of those will work great in a 5110F mold like this. So there you have the process of making a quick skull mold. And of course, as always, all of the products we use in our tutorials are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. And I'll link all of the materials we used in the video description, so be sure to check that out, as well as a link to our video library page on our website. We have a lot of mold making resources there to check out, such as the volume calculations and all of that. So be sure to check that out, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.